Good afternoon and welcome to our Thursday Live. I'm standing in a very hot, halting province in South Africa. We are sweating. It's really hot. It's summer. I hope that wherever you are watching from, that you will enjoy the session and that you will be inspired to start being creative. I'm Nadine Forsler, better known as Mama Choco, and my sole purpose is to inspire you, to share ideas, pain techniques and ideas so that you can start getting dirty and get creative. Today, we are going to start planning a very special day that's about to happen, Valentine's Day. We celebrate it once a year, but that's actually something that we should celebrate every day. Remember to tell those around us that we love and that pre are precious to us that we love them. So let's start Valentine's Day even today and spread the word and message of love. What we are going to do today is we are going to create a beautiful underplate with a raised stencil technique, stencil of Paris and antique brown glaze. We are doing it on a raw timber under plate or wooden board, but the technique can be applied to a wall surface, to a varnish surface, to a furniture item. So although it's a crafty session, it is something that can be applied to other surfaces. So this is the first thing we are going to start with, and the steps are, or the items that you will need, is the following. We are going to use the stencil. It's a chocolate paint stencil code 2115-1. It's a 15 by 15 centimeter stencil. As you can see, it's small in size, but it's beautiful and versatile. So that's the first item we will need. Then we are going to work with a paint scraper. We are going to work with a product that we manufacture that gives your stencil work a raised effect. And this is called Stencil of Paris. It's a thick paste. We are going to work with a color dampet. And we are going to work with antique brown glaze, a drop of matte black, and some water. Okay, now to start off the session with, and of course, a damp cloth. And there's a story behind a damp cloth, which I will share one day. Okay, so damp cloth, very important for paint techniques, especially this one. So first of all, I have a clean raw timber surface. When working with chalk or paint on raw timber, no preparation is required. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my paint scraper. You can also use an old credit card. It works like a charm. Scoop some from my jar, this is my stencil of Paris paste, and now you can decide this is a crafty session, it is creative fun. I'm spreading my stencil of Paris paste onto my board and onto my stencil, so I'm spreading it onto the stencil quite thickly, but still evenly, so I use my paint scraper Spread the paste, thin it out. Doesn't need to be perfect everywhere because it is a creative session. But if you do something on a furniture piece, you want a very even um, raised effect. You spend time and make sure that it's done perfectly. Should you want to create a perfect look? Okay, so now. My paste is spread onto my stencil. I did not secure with masking tape because it's not needed for the session. For perfect finishes, you can secure your stencil with masking tape. I lift my stencil and look the beautiful texture I have on my board. There you can see I went over the edge and that is fine. For this session, I do want to create some texture here and there. So I just spread randomly in between. Now I want to create a stencil design over here. 
So I choose random spaces on my palette board where I want to repeat my stencil work. And in the gaps over here, I will just fill with some texture. And I promise you, this is therapy. It's therapeutical to do the stencil work. Once you start, you actually don't want to stop. Lift my stencil and continue to another spot. And I'll do it here. So I think the process do make sense. Let's just complete this one. And this is a case of start and don't want to stop and I remove and I can add more so I'll add one there and in between I'll just create roughness and texture on my board Okay, so the process I hope makes sense and you complete the board. I'm just going to put my stems on the side for later use. Okay, here I have one that has been completed. So there you can see here and there the stems will work. Next very important step is to allow for this stems will work to dry. Now depending on the thickness of application, and also depending on temperatures, you can take between one to four hours. So if the weather is colder, it's more humid, everything takes longer to dry. And important, if you do the stencil of Paris application and you don't want to see cracks in the work, this is creative, so this actually doesn't matter. So do the applications at a time of day when the temperatures are dropping. So you won't do it in the morning when the temperatures are still rising to 12, which reaches a peak. You rather want to do it late in the day when the temperatures go down and then no cracking will appear. Okay, now I'm going to paint. So there's a lot of detail on my board. I use a Hamilton's 50mm fiberglass brush, fiberglass brush there. I dip it in my dovet. And what I do is I paint on my dry stencil of Paris paste. And you do want to reach in all those grooves and crevices. Spread it out. You can see the coverage is beautiful. And I'm painting my board. And I'm enjoying the process. Someone asked me yesterday if I need to give three tips when working with charcoal. What will those be? And I said, the first one is to always enjoy the process. The second one is you can never make a mistake. You are working with paint. It's not life-threatening. It's something that you can change. It's a medium where you can discover yourself, your own creative abilities. And the third very important tip when working with chocolate paint is to know that you have support behind you. We are a community where we assist, we help, we support. We have a lovely Facebook page called Choco Creations. We have a YouTube channel, Choco Paint, Instagram page. We have a support email address, support at Choco Paint. So whenever you feel that you are in that spot where you now need a soundboard or you need assistance, we are there to provide that assistance and that kind of it. Okay, so now, my board is painted in a coat of dovet. So these palette boards are available at Choco Paint, so you don't need to search high and low to find lovely as underplates, even as decor elements. Okay, now next important step. 
you need to allow your pain to dry four hours or longer before you continue to the next step. Last week I had Maestro attending the live session and today we have Baby Crystal Scat attending the live session. We are animal lovers. Okay, so on this side I have now a love for my paint to cure. Now I'm going to start with a, with a fun. I'm going to, in this board, in this paint tray, mix together antique brown glaze, three parts. One part matte black and one part water. So three parts, one part, one part. More or less, remember, it's a creative session, if you want to add more matte black, you can do so. The reason why I'm adding matte black to my antique brown glaze is just to create more contrast. So just to make it darker. So I mix it well. I lost my stirring stick. But we can always make creative plans. So in here... One, two, I guess maybe more, three, and all the others that grip down. Okay. Then remember the matte black, look out for the new darker matte black sticker. I'm going to add one. Tot. And then I should have started with this. One part water. Now the reason for the water is just to prolong the drying time as the antique ground glaze is a concentrated medium. Okay, I squeeze out for the attended um, a very exciting meeting today. And the gentleman said he can't understand why some people are such nasty painters and I said oh my god I think I'm the worst of everyone because I forgot my apron it's been meetings and meetings non-stop um, so once again I'm thankful for the creative session and I just need to try and keep myself clean so I mix all of this together just bear in mind I have mixed it with cooled boiled water tap water will contaminate your mix because I'm going to have some left over, actually a lot left over. The size of this measuring spoon was a 30 mil, and you will see I can almost paint um, Crystal's entire house with this. You will see how little we actually use. Okay. So whatever is left over, we will put in an airtight container and use again later. Now before I continue with my mixture, I need to have a damp microfiber cloth. So I make sure I've worked in work it through the water that it actually absorbs the water well. I squeeze up excess moisture but I wish you could feel it. It's rather too more damp than dry. And what I do is I fold it like a ball and I will put it in the palm of my hand when I use it. So this, and press it down with my flat hand. This, the way you hold the cloth actually is key to the success of the technique. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure my mixture is mixed well. Buy a compliment over your rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't, Crystal says there's a lot of compliments for my dress, thank you for my dress. I just so badly don't want to mess it, mess on it. Okay. So now I have my brush. But can you see there's no glaze dripping, dripping from it? So I've removed any excess glaze mixture. And what I'm going to do is I paint it in those crevices and detail. And it's so hot here, I actually don't want to do a to a big surface at a time, else it's going to dry before I have the time to wipe away. So this is wet distressing. The technique is called wet distressing. And I wipe away. 
So on cooler days, you will allow for it to settle for a few minutes before you start wiping away, but I can't allow for this to settle for a few minutes. The heat is on. And I continue. I haven't wet my brush again. This is still the same brush, so I use such a little amount. I move my cloth to a drier area. Very light pressure, so I don't apply hard pressure, gentle pressure. And I wipe away. And to get a more subtle version or a lighter version, move your cloth to a cleaner side and wipe. So you actually want to see the contrast in the grooves, in the crevices. This is what we want to accomplish, a stunning technique on a wall, even just with a stencil of Paris to create texture. And if I continue to the next. I'm going to speed up the process so that you don't get bored. Just find a cleaner version on my cloth. This is a stunning idea if you host a chalk or workshop for those chalk or workshop presenters out there. In Ireland, for instance, where you are so active, Scotland, um, our Australian partners. A shout out to everyone, Switzerland, um, and may it be such a blessed, successful year to you all, all our family members, because once you start using chocolate, you're actually part of a family and a community. Okay, now the last bit. I can feel now my brush is too dry, so I'm dipping it in more place, removing excess, Question, what do you call this technique? It's a wet distress technique, but also done with antique brown glaze. So you have wet paint and you wipe away the wet paint. With a wet cloth. With a, with a damp cloth. But the key to the success of this technique is the use of the antique glaze and the mix as I've described it earlier. Remember, these videos are available and many more on our YouTube channel. So please go like our YouTube channel and turn on those notifications, press the bell so that you receive the notifications and it's a free channel. And we update it quite often with more content. Okay. If, and this is a tip, you have made a mistake. And maybe you feel that somewhere something is done unevenly and you want to hide imperfections. This is something that you can do. So I'm going to use a clean cloth, also damp, and I'm going to do a wash technique on top of my wall. So this as is, is beautiful. Okay? It's beautiful. I don't need to change anything. But this is an alternative that can be done. So I take clean damp cloth. I add some of the color that I used as a base color. And this was dark fat. This was the first color that we used when we started painting. I rub it into my cloth. And I'm also now playing for a bit of time. So the antique glaze can just dry before I do this. This will be a subtle change. I don't know how well you will see the change on the screen. But for you as a painter to hide something, this is the way to do it. So I have paint on my cloth. I fold it like a ball again. I did press it flat with my free hand, but it's a dirty cloth this time. And what I do is I just gently wipe 
onto my surface. And I'm not sure if Crystal can see, but there mm -hmm. you can see the white that gets accentuated. The white detail on the stenciling that comes out. And you have a beautiful serving plate for that special Valentine's dinner that can start this evening. This was a brief session, but creative and filled with fun. And my message to all of you out there is the following. Time is unrefundable. So use it with impact. And make sure that that impact is positive impact. It was lovely to be with you from a sunny South Africa, to wherever you are watching, stay creative, be inspired, and I can't wait to share your creations with us. Doesn't matter where in the world you're from. I would love to see what you're up to. Lots of love from Mama Choco and the entire Choco team. Bye-bye.